So I want to talk about regular expressions. Uh, but first, I probably want to talk about how I'm going to talk about regular expressions. I'm going to use a Jupyter notebook. How many people have heard of Jupyter? So I could give a quick demonstration of Jupyter notebooks if you like, or I could go straight into regular expressions. Which would you prefer? Demonstration. I'll do a demonstration on Jupyter. Yes. All right. Let's see a little bit about Jupyter. So to start Jupyter, you this you won't be able to read. <coughs> you, uh, you just say Jupyter Notebook. You have to have it installed. I have it installed because I've installed Anaconda. Anaconda is a great way to install Python, and I think you can install Julia and R through Anaconda. Um, and it, it has the whole Jupyter interface. A Jupyter Notebook, once you start it, runs in your web browser and brings up a, a presentation like this. I cd'd to this directory first, so I'm pretty far down in the hierarchy. I don't have any subdirectories here. Uh, I'm just going to make a new Jupyter Notebook right now. And I have installed three different kernels, JavaScript, Python 3, and Ruby. Uh, I'm going to make a Python 3 one. And it starts with a cell. And in that cell, you can type whatever you like that happens to be Python. Or you can make cells that are markdown or raw notebook convert cells, which let you make a, a cell that gives information to the NB convert program. But uh, for instance, I can say, <coughs> numlock instead of <coughs> backspace. And then if I hit uh, control enter, that turns into um, turns into the display form of markdown. And I can enter some Python here, like A equals hello world. And then And then it prints Hello World. Or I could say A plus space, no really. And then it's going to print out as the output of that expression what happened next. So the only bad thing about this Jupyter Notebook is that behind the scenes, it's a hunk of JSON. And the reason that's bad is because source code control of Jupyter Notebooks is not as happy as you might like. Now, there are some ways around this, which I'm not prepared to discuss at this moment. <laughs> Maybe I'll come back and do a whole thing about Jupyter Notebooks. Um, but the thing to know is there are a bunch of J JSON behind the scenes. So I have here my presentation. I made this text big. Can you guys all read that? You probably shouldn't be reading while I'm talking. <laughs> but I made it big so you can read it anyway. Um, this is mostly about regular expressions, but it happens to be set in the world of regular expressions as they're used in Python. Regular expressions are a very common theme the things that I teach you about regular expressions here are going to apply to every language that you use, every place that you use them, except Vim. And <laughs> I mean, they apply to Vim, but only if you say slash V. Uh, so I have cleared all the output in this notebook, so I'm going to execute each cell as I go through it. And I'm going to start off with telling you what version of Python we're running. It's 3.7.1. So that's fairly recent. We're up to 3.9 dev. Um, I personally run 3.8.1 on my on my own machines. 
that this is what Anaconda is running right now. This whole Jupyter Notebook will be available to you afterwards. It lives here at my GitHub web website, which you can't see, so I'll make it bigger. Uh, so github.com slash wolf slash re dash presentation, or just go to github.com slash wolf and you'll, you'll find the re-presentation. And uh, GitHub very nicely displays the contents of your Jupyter Notebook as a notebook. It does have one downside, uh, its display, and that is I've written, I'm scrolling to make you sick, I'm sorry. I've written uh, this demo function here to print out using colors, because I love to use colors in my demonstrations. And the Jupyter Notebook does not display the colors in GitHub. And that is unfortunate. Anyway, back to the representation. The most important resource I can give you, besides my presentation, is Regex 101. It is a website that lets you test regexes, which are sometimes called regexes, but I have the same discussion with this about people that I have with GIFs and GIFs, <laughs> which I'm not going to get into. All right, later I'll get into it. Um, we'll use this in a little bit to try out some things. In Python, uh, all of this regular expression stuff is supplied by the RE module, the RE module, and it has documentation, which I link to, so you can get to that. Uh, there's another module called Regex. Um, I'm not going to go to their homepage, but they are a competitor with RE. They do a couple things that RE doesn't do. And then there's the Mastering Regular Expressions book, which is the seminal work in the field. It is about this thick. It's ridiculous. It tells you everything you could ever want to know about regular expressions. Once you've read that book, you will be sick with regular expression knowledge. I have left out the, one of the most important quotes of all time, which is from Jamie Zawinski. <laughs> and that quote is, you have a problem. You decide to solve it with regular expressions. Now you have two problems. <laughs> so what are regular expressions? A regular expression is a formal description of a set of strings and a well-known collection of rules to decide if a string is in that set or not. Um, if a string is in the set, then it's said to match the regular expression, which is sometimes called the pattern. Um, the re module has a function to test if a regular expression matches a string. It's called re.match. And it takes the pattern and the string. Although it's in the <coughs> facing the other way, it takes the pattern and then the string. It actually has several functions to do matching. Match is just the most important one I'm going to talk about right now. It matches starting at the beginning of the string. So this document is about regular expressions. And the re module from Python 3.7, even though we're at 3.8.1 now, most of it applies to earlier versions of Python, but your mileage may, may vary. So, where will you use regular expressions? Sure, all these places, but the most important is at parties to impress your friends. <laughs> that is what regular expressions are for. You know, you'll use them in grep and set and awk and in whatever language you're doing your programming in. Uh, even bash has, has regular expressions in a really horrible way, but but it has them. If you write compilers, you'll use flex or lex or re2c. Those all use regular expressions. Anyway, I've written a function here. It's called demo. So let me make sure I execute that. Wouldn't be any good if I didn't execute that. I have a function here called demo. And what demo does is basically it's all about printing. You can see all through here it's just print, 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 print. That's all that it does. But it uses 
this colored library um, to make the output look special. And I'm going to describe that output as we see it. Let's keep that. So, as we go on, the patterns that I show you are going to look more and more complicated. But, don't let that throw you. Um, by the time we get to the complicated looking ones, you will have the tools to understand what we're talking about. The first thing to know about regular expressions is that simple letters like the letters of the word cat match themselves. So the regular expression cat should match the string cat. And so you see I have just a straight hunk of Python here that doesn't use my demo function that will print the pattern cat matches the string cat only if read.match says that pattern matches that string. And a thing to notice here is that I put an R in front of the string that's the pattern. R marks a string as a Python raw string. That means don't do any interpretation of slashes inside the string. Don't let any escapes control what you're thinking. Okay. Uh, and this is, this is the way you should write your regular expressions. Always make them yes. be raw strings. And then right after I print that value, whether, if, if it's a match, I test cat against dog using the demo function that we wrote before. So now I'm going to execute this. So here you see two things. Yes, it does match. The pattern cat matches the string cat. But also the demo function prints the pattern in blue on yellow. And a non-matching pattern shows up in red. And in a little bit, we'll see what a matching pattern shows up in. So as I said a second ago, re.match only tests that the string starts with a match. There's a couple other functions, re.search which matches anywhere in the string, and read out full match, which means that your regular expression has to describe the complete string you're passed. But we'll talk about those later. So the bold part of the output is the actual match, and the non-bold part is the extra text that is not part of the match. I'm going to execute this. And here you see that the pattern cat matches the CAT of catch, the CH is just there, it's not part of the match. But it doesn't match copycat, because cat's not at the beginning of that string. Everything making sense so far? Good, because this is level zero. <laughs> All right, the next thing is character classes, or sets. These are uh, delineated in your pattern with a square set of square brackets. Anything you put in the set of square brackets represents one character, but it can be any of the characters that you've listed. So for instance, right here in this pattern, it's C, one of the letters A, O, or U, and then a T. And I'm going to try to match that against cat, coat, cute, and C. And you can see it matches cat, coat, and cute, but there's no I in that character set, so it doesn't match C. And if I had thrown another word in there, like county, county wouldn't match either because, first of all, this is only one character. It only is going to match one of the characters in that set. And second of all, N is not in that set. So two reasons not to match county. Excuse me. Could it, it can match against more than once? The O and the U both match? Mm -hmm. If I put C out, which is a yeah. um, C++, plus plus. C++ thing, no, it will not match because that character set is only supposed to match one character. So it okay. doesn't match C out, even though the O and the U even though the O and the U match. If I had said you could have two of those, then it would match C out, but none of the others. 
Okay. Now, instead of saying which characters you want in the set, you can express which set of characters, which characters you don't want in the set. So, for instance, right here, by starting my set with a caret, shift six, uh, I say anything but a Y is acceptable. And when I hit control enter there, uh, that matches cat and coat, but not cytoplasm, and it matches CCTV. You know, the V is extra, but it matches the CCTV. Yes. To actually get a shift six uh, carrot in the set, just make sure it's the first, not, not, not the first character, or escape it. So here, I'm going to uh, escape a bracket in the set with the slash, and I'm going to put a carrot in there, but it's not the first character. So this should match both of these strings, because carrot's in the set, and right bracket is in the set. Does that make sense? Let's see it happen. And it does. Also in a character set, you can express ranges by taking letters or digits and putting dashes in between them. Now it doesn't have to be the full range. So you see I've got A to F here that I'm talking about uh, because I'm, I'm talking about hex digits in this case. Um, so I didn't have to say A to Z. I did say 0 to 9 to get all of the digits. Um, we'll see a different way to do that in a second. Uh, so this should match the first one, the second one, and not the third one because Q is not in the range A to F. What about case sensitivity for like hex? All right, so there's lots of ways to express case sensitivity. If I had said C here, it would not have matched it doesn't match. Okay. But if I had also added in here A to F, then it would have matched. And I also could have supplied um, an argument that made it be case insensitive. And I'll show you how to do the case insensitive part in a little bit. To include a dash in a set, you can make it first or following something that's not a letter or a digit. I think escaping it also works. Um, but here I've put it first. So this isn't the range of nothing to A. It's match and dash. So this should match both the A and the C. Both the dash and the C. And it does. All right. So shortcuts. There's lots of special characters and this is where that little booklet comes in handy, or the big book, or the read documentation um, that means specific things. Slash D stands for digit, and it means the range from zero to nine. And dot is the shortcut for matching any character at all except a new line. So this pattern here matches one, two, three digits, then a dash, and then four digits. So it should or shouldn't match this first one. No, and no, and yes. And then this second pattern matches three digits, dash, two digits, then any character at all, and then a, another digit. So that should match the first one, not match the second one, and should match the third one. Right? Does that sound right? Yes. Let's see it. Why isn't that dash taken as a range? Because this dash isn't inside a character set. Crash D is not. If I had, inside square brackets. If I had put square brackets around this, then it's still not a range because there's nothing, it's alone and there's nothing around it. Um, but I'm going to, those, those square brackets make basically nothing happen at this point because it just means match, match, match a range. Match a character from the set that includes only the dash. 
and there it is exactly as we described it. This demo function is pretty cool. I happen to like it very much. <laughs> All right. So it was really annoying to write out slash d slash d slash d slash d slash d slash d slash d. That was, that, I don't like typing. And that was too much typing. So it turns out there's special um, formulations for repeat counts. And that is curly braces around a min, comma, a max. Um, it turns out that you can leave out uh, the max uh, and just put a comma there um, or nothing. In my experience, you can't leave out the min and start with a comma. That doesn't work. It might work, but it seems like it doesn't work to me. But it, it might. But anyway, we'll start with this first pattern. Is there a way to find out? Is yeah. there a way to find out? <laughs> Maybe we'll find out. Let's find out. Demo R equals um, comma four. So if this comma four means anything, it should match, well, we have to figure out what it would use as a minimum. Probably zero or one. I would guess zero. Zero. So then it should match cat and dogs and muck. So let's see what happens when we try all of these. All right, so this comma does work. So can you put one more in there that's just equal, equal, and no word, and no uh, word, yeah, it should be nice size, and see if it matches that. Is equal equal. So zero works. So, so, so zero yeah. works. See how great Jupyter notebooks are? You get to oh. play, experiment, see what works, what doesn't work. Uh, so a thing that I did in here, aside from playing with min and max, is that I used slash w. And for ASCII, slash w means all of the alphabetic letters of both cases and all of the digits and the underscore. It stands for word. Slash W is a word character. That's why it's always surprises me that it also includes the digits. Yeah. The word has digits in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, slash lowercase d and slash lowercase w are the positive matches. They match digits and words, respectively. Slash uppercase d and slash uppercase w match the opposite of that. Slash d is like a character set. Slash capital D is like the opposite of that character set. Right. Now there's shortcuts for repetition because they happen so much. Um, so often you want to say that something is either there or not, or that there's at least one of them, but you don't know how many. It could be a, any number. Or that it's optional, but there could be any number of them. Then it could be from zero on. And so those shortcuts are question mark for optional, the plus sign for there have to be at least one, and the star for zero or more. So in this demo, the pattern is at least one digit, but any, any number after one. Zero or more space characters, slash s means any white space. Uh, the dash sign, optionally, zero or more white space characters, 
and then zero or more digits. And the question is, will it match 555-TAB1212, 411, and 12345-ABC? So here we go. So it matches the entire string of 555 some white space 1212 because that dash is followed by slash s star which means zero or more white space so I got some white space and that was all matched there's no I didn't highlight I didn't make white space highlight maybe I should have I don't think I did I think it's fine the way it is um, 411 matches because the dash is optional the white space is optional and the uh, <coughs> digits are optional and one, two, three, four, five dash matches because the digits are optional. And then this ABC is just extra characters that were there that are not part of the match, but they didn't stop the match from happening. What is the question mark? The question mark means zero or one things. Now there's another meaning for question mark coming up that I'm gonna talk about, but what it means is that, let me make another demo line here that R um, O O T question mark um, why did I always make two? I hate that. Comma should match both O O and OOT and it will match the start of OOR but it won't match the R. Which is that can you guys see the difference in color between the R and the O's? Mm -hmm. Oh the question mark there could you have anything after the O uh, after the T, could you have other? No, no, I'm not in the data, not in the pattern. I guess I'm still trying to understand the question mark. Yeah, that'll work. And get rid of the X in the pattern. Now. Matches that part, not because it matches the start of this thing. Yeah, the X, the X is X not in the pattern, so the X doesn't match anything. If I put the X in the pattern, then everything will match except the last one. Does that make sense? And then why does it? Why does OOT match OOX? Uh, the T is optional because the T is followed by the question mark. Oh, it's, oh, it's working. I thought the question mark was working to the right. It's, no, no. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, Got it. Numeric counts and the shortcuts for repetition all follow the thing they apply to. Okay. The, um, the bold versus unbold, that's just part of the uh, Python, but that's not part of your the demo, um, function. demo function? Demo function is the thing that makes that bold okay. versus not that bold is. thing happen. Okay. okay. Alternation. Uh, alternation is when you say this thing or that thing. So, cat or dog does, since the uh, alternation operator, the vertical bar, binds with less precedence than any of the other things, like a sequence, CAT is a sequence, that binds higher than the alternation operator. Uh, that means it's going to match the word cat or the word dog at the beginning of a group, at the beginning of the string. So it matches catchy and it matches dog lover, but it does not match apple pie. <laughs> does that make sense? And I could have put as many things here as I wanted to. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> but 
it does show that you can put multiple things there. I could have moved dog to be at the end of that, and it still would have matched exactly the same way. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Now we're getting into the advanced stuff. You can actually use parentheses to group pieces of the match together so that you can do things specific to that group. Either remember it in what's called a capturing group or um, comment it out or make flags apply just to it or repeat it, make it optional. So for instance, right here, I've said slash D, three of them, and then this group, which is a dash and four digits, but that entire group is optional. That means both 5551212 should, should match, because that would be the group appearing, and 411 should match, because that's the group not appearing. And when you've captured a group with regular parentheses, um, you should be able, you can reference it again, starting with one as the first match, um, later in your regular expression. I know this is complicated, but what that means is, right here, I've matched any number of word characters. That's, remember, that's A through Z, both cases, 0 through 9, and underscore. And then a space, and then that same pattern again. So A, B, C, D, E, F won't match because D, E, F is not the same as A, B, C. But A, B, C, A, B, C oh. will match because those oh. two patterns are the same. Okay. This is something that we are now at the part of regular expressions that most people don't know. <laughs> Where is this useful? It's useful, for instance, when you're matching an href and do not get the idea, because I'm matching an href, that you can use regular expressions to parse HTML. You absolutely cannot do that. And in fact, later I reference a, a, a uh, Stack Overflow post that you'll want to read. So in this first match group, you match anything from the set of the single quote or the double quote character, then you match anything but this question mark, here is a new use of the question mark. This is that thing I was warning you about a few minutes ago. This question mark is called non-greedy. When it follows the star, or it follows a uh, numeric group, or it follows uh, a plus, it means instead of matching the normal thing, which is the longest string of characters you can possibly match, it says stop as soon as you find any match and then continue with the rest of the regular expression. It's called non-greedy or lazy evaluation. So this, again, wants to find a quote mark, either single or double, as short a string as possible, that is followed by that same quote mark. If it was a single quote, it wants to find the next single quote. If it was a double quote, it wants to find the next double quote. So here I've got href hello, href goodbye, and href abc, but it's broken. Now let's run it. So just like we said, the first pattern matched both numbers, and the group matched abc, abc, but not abc, de. <coughs> and just like we decided a second ago, um, matching the quote with the following quote worked for the first two and not for the last one where the quotes were different. We're on an advanced level. Go ahead. I got a question. Uh, the, uh, the slash one made me think of uh, is there something similar for palindromes? Like same thing but backwards? Not that I know of. Sorry. Okay. You can write it in Python. Yeah, I'm sure you can. I'm sure there's an expression that'll do it. Just no shorthand. 
Thing. Yeah. The problem with palindromes is they're like balancing parentheses, yeah. and you can't balance parentheses with regular expression because uh, regular expressions are a simpler grammar than than what you get when you have parentheses or tags or parentheses are in the same family as HTML. Okay. So palindromes, you could reverse, you could have a palindrome of a certain known size. Mm -hmm. Like if it was yeah. 10 characters long, you could write it out so that you match the individual five groups and then play them back in. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. Okay, special groups. Special groups start with a question mark inside the parentheses and then something depending on what it was. So for instance, uh, in this demonstration, question mark colon is a non-capturing group. Um, so that would mean that this is group one. So let's say space slash one. Oops, that didn't go where I wanted it. Space slash one. And then one, two, one, two there. So this will match the first one because this whole group is non-capturing. And then this is group one. And one, two, one, two was repeated as group one. So it should match the first one and not the second one. Before I made this change adding group one, it would have matched 4501 because the first group is optional and the second group is not. And it would have matched that, but it would not have demonstrated that it was a non-capturing group. And then this uh, second thing that I'm showing here is a couple couple points to make. One is that in Python you can triple quote strings, and a triple quoted string can have new lines in it, and it just works. Um, it can still be a raw string or an F string or any of the special kinds of strings that you want. And then this is me setting a flag. Question mark followed by one of the flag characters sets a particular flag. X is the verbose flag, which means to ignore white space um, wherever it appears and comments wherever it appears inside the, the string so that you can sort of expand your regular expression and make it uh, more easily commented. So question mark x is verbose mode, slash d3 is prefix, three digits, and then an optional group of a dash followed by four digits, but this white space is ignored, this white space is ignored, this white space is ignored, all of this white space is ignored, all of this white space is ignored. And the comments are ignored, and the new lines at the end are ignored. That's right. So, so the triple quote, it, isn't that kind of defeating the purpose of the, of the law? It's, it's you're interpreting away those white spaces and those comments. Uh, the reason to say raw is so that slash D doesn't get turned into something or slash n or slash t doesn't get turned into something. Python will do something with that. Because Python will do something with that before it gets to the regular expression engine. Oh, yeah. So slash r and the triple quotes are kind of orthogonal. Triple quotes just lets you have new lines in there. Slash the r, to make it raw, stops escape characters from turning into something that before it gets to the regular expression engine. Are you ready to run this one? Let's do it. So, as I said, because we put that slash one there, one two one two matches one two one two, so that matches the entire string of five 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 one two one two, and it does not match four five zero one because four five zero one was not repeated. Let's put four five zero one in there and run it again, and now they both match. So you can set flags for the whole pattern or just for part of the pattern. 
In this case, um, which is way too high for me to reach, I'm using my I flag. I makes it case insensitive, which I know you guys have been waiting for. Yes. So in the first case, I sets case insensitivity for the entire string. So both of those should match. In the second case, it only sets I for the part of the string that includes A, B, C. And the X, Y, Z have to match exactly. So that means the first one won't match, and the second and third will match. Does that make sense? Can you see those? That way of putting those flags and those special things like the, the question mark I, is that a Python thing? Nope. Because that, that's not how you do it in set. You, do after, you put your flags after the slash. You put slash I if you want to make it case insensitive. Yeah, that's true. In said, it's a little different. Um, PHP does the same thing. Does yeah. it that's this it. way? No. Uh, you have a slash I. And for Perl, I would do it the other way. G for full. Yeah, yeah. I've just not seen that syntax before. Okay. Maybe it's there. Maybe it's, maybe it's only Python. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't you know. know. I haven't tried that, that in PHP to see if it recommends it. That's there's also like, um, like that's one of the things I was going to say a little bit around is that uh, kind of like how you guys are mentioning, there are not every version of like a, a regex like equals out, right? So like sure. we were doing some stuff with like the grep dash e, grep dash e doesn't match the slash digit, uh, like really? slash d. So when trying to do a repeating digit, it doesn't match on that. So when you have a correct regex or regular, regular expression and you try it, it works, and then you pass right. it into it something and it's like, sense. why doesn't this work? Yeah. yeah. They get like that. I, I want to say, I'm not certain, I want to say Perl was one that brought in a lot of the, the slash d slash w slash s symbols. Is that right? So here I'm using PHP style strings. And the parenthesis question mark I colon seems to work. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if this is lying to me or not. Yeah. Yeah, it's just lying. It happens to be right. It, it could be lying. The result is right, but it's lying. Yeah. So let's give that a try. And it matches exactly what we said it would match. Now, these uh, these flag setting things don't have to be at the beginning of the string. They can just be anywhere in the string. They can just be anywhere in the string. So, for instance, well, it applies to the whole string. You know, I don't know if this applies to the whole string. Let's let's find out. Let's put this in the middle. Let's <coughs> see if it applies to, let's make another string here. ABC. I have a special keyboard at, at work that I use that's um, much easier for me to type on than this one. I don't recommend it because it's very hard to learn how to type on my keyboard. But it's, uh, it's the Kinesis Ergo Advantage 2 that I love. All right, let's run this. Wow, it looks like that flag in the middle of the string applies to the entire string. What's that? Is that yeah. warning about the application warning? Huh, flag's not at the start of the expression. Yeah. Application <laughs> warning. That's fine. It may work now, but it may not in the future. <coughs> there you go. Yeah. 
All right. Assertions. These are hard to see because they're long. Um, I've done a couple of things here. Um, in this, I'm going to make the lower second point. In this, I've turned on demo had a show location function, which shows the exact range of the match with numbers that are the character positions. And I can also set what the matching function is. By default, it's read up match, but I, here I'm setting it to read up search, so it'll search anywhere in the string. Now, the specific thing that I'm looking for is much harder to express. This group notation here, and I'm going to put it up high again, sorry. This group notation here is what's called a positive look ahead. So in other words, this will match Isaac only if it's followed by one or more spaces and the name Asimov. So it should match Isaac Asimov, just the Isaac part of Isaac Asimov, but it should not match Isaac that's followed by Newton. And remember, this look ahead assertion matches no characters at all. It just looks to see if they're there, but they won't participate in the match. You can imagine that there's four different versions of this. There's positive look ahead, there's negative look ahead, there's positive look behind, and there's negative look behind. And that's what I've demonstrated here. Positive look ahead with Asimov, negative look ahead with Newton, so that should match exactly the same things that the first one matches. And then negative look behind with particle physics. So that should match nuclear physics but not particle physics. And positive look behind with nuclear physics, which should match the exact same thing. You guys ready? Yep. So look behind is the less than they couldn't make look ahead the greater than? Great. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. So matches Isaac Asimov, matches Isaac Asimov because it rejects Isaac Newton. Here it matches Isaac Asimov because it finds a Asimov. Here it rejects it because it finds Newton. And using read out search nuclear physics. Now this match is not at the beginning of the string. So if I had used read out match, uh, it wouldn't have matched at all in spite of these zero match, zero oh, wow. length match yeah. things. That's why I had to say read out search. If I, I made that be match. then neither of them matches. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. There's other zero length matching characters. Like for instance, slash B matches a word boundary. So that means it has to be uh, not in the middle of a word. Slash capital B matches something that's not a word boundary. Usually the capital and the lowercase versions are opposites of each other. So, if I look for cat slash b, then cat should match, catchy shouldn't match, and cat call should match, because dash is not a word character. And if I look for cat slash capital B, then it should be the exact opposite. Cat shouldn't match, catchy should match, and cat call shouldn't match. Also zero length matches are the caret not inside a uh, character class, which matches the beginning of a string. Um, and the dollar sign, which matches the end of a string. So here I have to use search because well, I have to use it here, for sure, because ABC would be at the end of the string, and, I, and I've had strings that are longer than three characters. So let's run this. So, cat slash lowercase b matches the outer two, cat slash capital B matches the inner one, just like we said. And then using read.search, I match ABC at the beginning of the pattern. This does not have ABC at the beginning of the pattern. I match the same two patterns 
with ABC dollar and it matches the other one. Is that all sinking in? All right. Those wouldn't work with we don't match. The last one because it's right. If I turn this into we don't match. Then both of them fail. All right. When the string you want to search contains new lines, you probably want to use uh, the multi line flag. Um, I think that's question mark M if you're going to put it in your. In your, uh, in your string, in your pattern, or uh, read up, match and search and whatnot. All of the ones that uh, use a pattern take the flags as an argument with these special words, read up multi-line. Oops. So let's actually um, insert a cell below and make a pattern that matches multi-line strings and have to uh, find A, B, C, at the end of a line, and then we will make uh, a triple chord string that has A, B, C, um, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and D, E, F. And this should match the first line and the second line, or at least the ABC in those two lines, because in multi-line mode, dollar means the end of a line, not the end of the string. And it failed to match the second one. Oh, because I know why. Here's why. <laughs> because it stopped when it found the first match. I didn't say find inner or find all or any of those things. If I had said find inner or find all, it would have found that second one. But if I turn this into um, Can I what? You have a series of flags after one question mark, like question mark I am G. Yes. I don't know what G does. Global. Uh, Guessing global. Yeah. Find out. That's what it'd be. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> flag 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 position flag four. Position four. DEF is not DEF is not at the beginning of the string. All right. So those are most of the tools that the regular expressions give you. Now I'm going to talk about the tools that the RE module gives you. First, it has those three functions that we talked about: match, which matches starting at the beginning; search, which finds it wherever it is in the string; and full match. It will also split a string into pieces based on a regular expression. You can use find all and find inner to find all of the occurrences um, and to iterate over all of the occurrences. And you can substitute uh, a string for a match or a certain number of strings for matches. I think that's what sub n does. We'll look and see if we, if we use it in a second. 
So match versus search versus full match. I got catchy. Starts with uh, cat, but it's not a full match for it. <coughs> cat is a full match, and alley cat is not at the beginning. I, I try it once for match, once for search, and once for full match. Each one of them should match one of these expressions or more. Search should match more, but it's going to stop early. Let's give it a try. Oh, there are, there are multiple strings. It's not going to stop early. It's going to do it. So, catchy and cat will start with cat, so match works. Um, RE.search finds them all, and full match only finds cat. So, those are the three main functions that you use. There's actually several different ways to do these matches, to do the to call these functions. Um, we're calling them with my demo function right now, but the two ways to do it are you can do re dot match r cat against the string catchy. And that's going to return a match object. So it'll print that. A match object with a span of 0 to 3 that matches cat. Um, what was I about to tell you about this? Or you can compile the string. Pattern equals re.compile r cat, and then pattern.match catchy, we'll comment out this, this one. And that gives you the same thing, a match object with a span of 0 to 3 matching the word cat. So you can do it either using the RE functions right at the top level, give it a raw string and let it do its thing, or you can compile the pattern and call it directly from the pattern. Now it turns out there's different options with those two, and I'll get to those in just a second. I think I'll get to those in just a second. We'll see in a second. Um, so splitting with a regex can do things that a regular stir.split cannot do. Stir.split splits on a fixed string, whereas re.split splits on a regular expression. So here, my row is A, some spaces, a B, a semicolon, a tab, the C character, another semicolon, D, E, a ton of spaces before my F. I'm splitting on the expression that is any character from the set, comma or semicolon, followed by zero or more amount of white space. So this is going to return an array of just the elements that came between and or around commas and semicolons followed by white space. So it should be the array of A, B, C, D, E, F with no trimming needed on any of them. They should just be ready to go. And that's what we got. That's true. Uh, or we could clean the data with re.sub. So here, it's the same pattern, commas and semicolons followed by white space. But I'm replacing any row, any range of that with comma and a space. This is not going to change row, which I set up here, and if not, reset. This didn't change it either. It just spit out values. This is just going to give me a new string that is like row, but with substitutions. That's pretty useful. All right. Find all and find inner. So, First of all, in Python, a thing you don't do is you don't say for i equals 1 to 10 or anything like that, or for i in a range 10. Instead, what you do is you iterate over 
a collection of things. And find iter acts like a collection. It's going to return each hunk of that, that row. And enumerate says, for each thing that you hand back to me, I'm going to also hand you a number to go with it. And that one that I've supplied at the end says start that numbering at one. So it's going to return two values, an index and a match. And it's going to do that for each match that find it or give me. So it's going to turn one and A, two and B, three and C, and so on. And find all, it's just going to find them all uh, in word groups. Ready? So I printed match I spans match.span for each group. Um, match.span is the, uh, I, didn't, I didn't write what the match was. And I forget what the characters are to make the match. Maybe I have to say match that group. Well, I like what I have. Um, so I spit out the enumerated number, that's what, what uh, enumerate gives you, one, two, three, four, five. And then the actual spans that were matched. So one through four is the first thing that was found. That's, if we look at row zero, one, two, three, four, gets all of that. Then the second span is five through seven. So that was four. Here's five, six, seven. But it's listing five matches and you have six elements in there. It's listing five matches because this is matching the separators as opposed to the elements that are being separated. Hmm. You're counting the things in between. The yeah, I'm counting the things in between. So it's like the number of commas in this one. And you can also pass a function. Oh, you know, I could have said m dot group. So, the, so the, the things that I found were the separators and their white space. Does that make sense? I know we're getting to the really rough edges here. And finally, you can pass in a function. I happen to just use a lambda function here, which means a function you declare in one expression. Lambda m means a function that takes one, one parameter, which we'll call m, and it's going to return the value m.group.upper. Uh, m.group is the text, just like we showed here. And I'm calling row, but now I'm only looking for word characters, not the semicolon, comma, white space thing that I was looking for before. So now I'm finding the actual elements, not the stuff between. And what I should return is um, the original thing, but with capital letters instead of lowercase letters. And that's what I got. Although, probably, it would have been easier to just say uh, row.upper. 
So I went to some trouble there, but for no reason. Well, you could put an if conditional in there or something like that. I could. All right. What do these functions return? The ones that do search and match and uh, what's the other one called? Full match. Full match. That's right. I always forget, I never use full match. Um, so it returns a match object, and you can do all kinds of things with a match object, as you saw me doing up here above with match.span and match.group. Um, you can say what group you want the text from, and you can get the spans out of them, and you can get tuples, and let's just run it and see. So group one is the characters eight six seven. Group two is five three zero nine. I can get them both as a tuple by just specifying them both as a tuple. Uh, I can extract the range out of them. So group one matches the range from zero to three. That's zero, one, two, three. Group two matches four to eight, and the original pattern was this thing. And you can see it does not print it as a raw string, so it had to put in double slashes to get slash D. If you didn't use raw strings, that's how you would be writing your regular expressions. You'd be putting slash slash D and slash slash W. And that's horrible. So always use raw strings. Okay. So tips and tricks. Verbose mode, that's that question mark X thing that I showed. That'll let you expand a complicated regular expression into multiple lines so you can make it look simpler, at least a little simpler. Do you use that? I do use that. In fact, I use it below. I'll show you a real regular expression that I use in a real application that's coming up. Um, you have to decide whether you're going to compile the regular expression or not. If you compile it, you can use it multiple times and It doesn't, because it's going to compile it no matter what if you pass it as a string. Possible that if you call it 20 times using the string form, it would compile it 20 times. It probably doesn't because it caches the last few you've compiled. Mississippi sounds a little bit like Michigan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you can use, uh, you can get back out of a regular expression, the, the RE will escape a string that has regular expression characters in it to turn it into something that is not a regular expression. I've forgotten at this moment what match.expand does, and we talked about non-greedy matching. But the real question is, what do you want to use? What is the fastest and what is the slowest? So here we'll, we'll look at cat equal equals cat. So 38.1 nanoseconds, can that be right? And it is. Okay, nanoseconds, I guess. Those are smaller than microseconds? Or are they bigger than microseconds? Smaller. Smaller. Wow. Um, using the in keyword, 54, using starts with, oh, we're getting longer now, okay. 159, should I go on? Sure. Uh, re.search how long do you think it'll be? 956 
full match. Ooh, 1.09 microseconds. So that's longer than 956. You're right, nanoseconds are smaller. Of course you're right. And then match. 1.07, so slightly less than full match, but... So was the in keyword like the shortest or second shortest? The shortest was equal equal. Equal equal, well, yeah. yeah. So does that time change Based on if you scroll down a little bit, so if you did the full match of cat versus dog, is it going to perform differently than if it's a match? It should bail out quickly, yeah, so it should be bail. shorter. Yeah, and it is shorter. Only, only but just. Not by, <laughs> yeah. not by a huge amount. No, because it has to build its matching um, finite state automata and do the whole job. Well, you wouldn't use regular expressions for simple items. No, you wouldn't. But this is just to show you, you wouldn't use regular expressions for simple this items. <laughs> <laughs> Can confirm. So common things that go wrong. Um, <laughs> You don't use a raw string. That's a huge mistake. Always use a raw string. Um, not understanding multi-line, which we're going to use in an expression I do below, um, and dot all, which means that the dot character, in, when you're using multi-line, dot all makes the dot character also match a new line. The dot character normally just matches anything except a new line. With dot all, the dot character matches everything. In Python 3, mixing stir with bytes is bad. Stir is Unicode. Bytes is, I don't want to say ASCII, but it's, it's, it's mostly bytes. ASCII. It's a bunch of 8 bit bytes. And do not try to parse HTML <laughs> or balance parentheses. This is the, like, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is the post. It says things like doomed to humanity to an eternity of dread, torture, and security holes using regex as a tool to process HTML establishes a breach between this world and the dread realm of corrupt I don't even want to go on. <laughs> you can look at it yourself. So, here are a couple real world, world cases. Well, not totally real world. Um, this first one is me parsing a URL. Now, really, if you were doing this, you'd use URL lib and urllib.parse has its own thing and does the right thing. And I don't know whether it uses regular expressions or it's got a grammar or what, but this is an example. Here I use a special kind of group, this uh, question mark P and then angle brackets around a word. That word becomes a name for that group. Just like we use group one, group two, group three, now we can use group query. And uh, you can reference that group um, using another special form, which we're not going to do. But the point is that I look for the protocol, the host, the port, and this whole thing I compiled uh, using the verbose flag. That's like putting the X at the beginning, two question mark X. Right. So all this white space is ignored. Anyway, now I've got a set of URLs here. And for each URL, I print the full URL. Then I look for a match using the compiled pattern, <coughs> the match string. Does it, does it match? I could have used full match here, um, but I didn't. I used match. So technically, it could throw away stuff at the end, but I try to match everything. Yeah. Um, and then the group index has keys since I gave them names. So for the group name in those keys, I can print out just that part. And that is what I do. So let's run it on those. So the full URL, well, you can see the results. I don't have to iterate over them with my mouth. 
even these long ones, which get underlined because they're things that you could click on. That's why they're blue. I didn't make them blue. They're just blue because they look like links. That's something that uh, Jupyter Notebook does. Okay. As it turns out, I have this um, ping page that comes up when I go to the website that I work on that has listed in it tons and tons of stuff and among it are the enabled features which are a list of feature flags. It only has the true ones. This is a um, dump var in PHP or however you say that, var dump, dump, var, var dump. Var dump. Uh, so it prints them all as true. We normally wouldn't have bothered printing true because it only lists the true ones. Um, there's a parenthesis at the start and one at the end as well. And it starts with the word enabled features like that. So this file is called partial web page dump.txt. And in here, if that exists, it's not, by the way, in the Git repo that you'll look at. Because even though I cleared out passwords and stuff, who knows what you might find in there? I don't, I don't know. So I compile the pattern that starts with enabled features, looks for anything that's not a parenthesis, followed by a parenthesis, followed by anything that's not a parenthesis, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's zero there more of them, and then close with a parenthesis, and it matches a multi-line string. So that I use to grab this match here should be exactly the text that is just those features, and it ignores everything else in the file. It should find that very quickly. And then the switch itself is a thing that is in single quotes, is any character but a non-greedy match, as many of those as you could find up until the very first single quote that you find, followed by arrow true. And that's multi-line. And I'm gonna find all of those at once in the enabled features span of the text. The text is the whole the whole whole document. The span, remember I've done span a couple of times and it gave me two numbers, the starting offset and the closing offset. Star blows apart a tuple or an array into a list of elements. So find all takes a hunk of text and then a start offset and a close offset. And using star on enabled features dot span blows that span up into those two values. And then I make that into a set, and I print out the sorted value of that set. So this should print out an alphabetical list of just the feature switches that are turned on in my ping page using two regular expressions. And that was how fast it did it. So that is regular expressions. What other questions can I answer from you? Yes. So I'm more of a Windows person. How common is this across platforms? I was trying to do my C sharp. Should I be able to use this? Safe? What's your editor? What editor do you use? Um, Visual Source Safe. That's a source code control system. Not Source Safe. Eh? Visual Studio. I'm sorry. Visual Studio yeah. has regular expressions in its search. But is it the same? Yes. That's okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. So what's your thought on Git versus Git? 
<laughs> oh, God. I feel like you asked that question just in time. <laughs>